Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is a daily live exit. Myself and John in the studio. Um, some positive news to start the show for once. Well, I mean, it's a positive news. Jared Branthwaite is uh, supposedly going to be given an England call up. It'll be confirmed at two, two o'clock. There's a couple of games that they're playing. Um, is that good news, John? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I think I don't know. I've done it on here. I just talked to your mates. I don't know which one it is, to be honest. But um, you know, I would have been shocked if he wasn't called up. Yeah. Um, and surprised if he doesn't get minutes. Mm -hmm. And which is good because players become more valuable when they play for their country. But also, I think he deserves to play at a higher standard and with better players just to see help his development. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you stick him alongside Maguire, he might not be playing with better players, but. But um, yeah. alongside John Stones, yeah, uh, you know, alongside John or with John in front of him mm. or what have you, you know, I mean, England have just got opportunities, mm. and it, thankfully we've got a very progressive, attack-minded manager who um, at England level who will exploit all that talent and mm. will walk the Euros, won't we? <laughs> Going to Paul Mason. Uh, that, oh, crikey, Paul Mercer said that. That's, he said it'll be failure if England don't win the Euro. Did he? And he said only two players out the French team would get into the Oh, I remember team. that bit, yeah. Which and is he, interesting. I'm uh, curious. I, I think when I saw it, I thought, which, which two does he yeah, think it'll be And I don't two? think he knows which two, yeah. <laughs> um, England will play Brazil and Belgium uh, over the course of the break. Friendlies. Yeah. And hopefully hopefully we'll get some minutes, because why Against not? Against Brazil. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Getting yeah. them in against Brazil, and why not? Why Where not? Where are they? These friendlies? Um, well, they're not going to Brazil, are they? No, no. They're going to the they're, they're both at Wembley by the looks of it. Oh, I think. Okay. So, um, I hope Everton have done what we probably you told them to do and said, right, we'll be the home of Brazil in this country when the new stadium is open. Do you think Everton have got that kind of nose? Uh, they're bright enough to watch this channel, I think. Yeah, I don't know if they're bright enough to listen to me. Uh, well, yeah, well, because that's because you were a bit up and down, aren't you, with your content? But uh, from their perspective, not from ours, yeah. right? Um, but no, I just think it's the, I don't know. Remember, we were, we were chatting last night, weren't we? And you know, I watched you all grin when I said Toffee Fest, right? Yeah. But to me, an event that and, and I know Dave was talking about, we don't have general meetings and things. Mm. Well, have a complete fan event yeah, which yeah. includes the general meeting yeah, i.e. Yeah. for shareholders only build it round it and build it round that and you know anyone who puts these events today you know i mean creamfields will be on again near my house yeah yeah you know in the summer and i can hear it and i know the the, the farmer who owns all the land and stuff like that and he has a great time mm. but that's just got bigger and bigger and that's what yeah, happens if you yeah. so the sooner you start those sort of things the sooner if you build they it. become they will come they yeah. will come but yeah, so you imagine that you could then be saying, well, we're playing Brazil away mm. in a friendly, but the away is yeah. the Everton yeah, Stadium. Yeah, I'll know. I've said this. And the home game We've against said, Belgium me, is at Wembley. Me and, jo uh, me and Baz have mentioned this a few times, that that's exactly what Everton should be doing. And, you know, yeah. it, get those contracts. Be the home of Brazil. Be the home of Argentina. Be the home of, uh, you know, whoever. whoever. Nigeria. Well, yeah, countries who have... Lots of players playing in the Premier League mm -hmm. and perhaps the EFL as well, who home game from a player's perspective should be in England. Yeah, yeah. For convenience and all yeah. that sort of stuff. USA. Yeah. Uh, because there, there nice is ties back to us as yeah, well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And there is no doubt that Jim Ratcliffe is on a journey to um at some stage the Football Association will do a deal for England home games and mm. there'll be two stadiums in it rather than just one. Mm. And that then naturally becomes there'll be semi-finals of FA Cups, and they'll all be at Old Trafford. Yeah, yeah. So you're not we're not going to get our foot in the door as the home of England in the northwest, for example. But why not for the other countries? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's what exactly what he will be doing. Just ring Richie up; he can sort it. <laughs> be interesting to see whether Jim Ratcliffe goes after the NFL markets as well. With an, with if a... they're building a new stadium, it would make sense, wouldn't yeah, it, to yeah. make it capable of hosting nfl because if, if if the nfl does have overseas franchises yeah, then yeah. london would obviously be a massive attraction yeah. hence what daniel levy's done at, at tottenham but having one in the northwest of england would be amazing well in the north yeah and they're not bothered are they because no? they, they've gone into germany and they're going into spain and That's they're right, being yeah. about so they don't they don't care <clears throat> but so that'd be cool yeah 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 but just going back to brantwaite um you know, there was a time when I, I didn't really like our players going to play for England. Not in a 
not in a sense of I don't you know it was more of a they're going to get tapped up or it's not know, injuries it's tapped up yeah it's not injuries it's more to get tapped up or you know but now I think look I th- what you could have won well, I, I do you think you could have had a much bigger salary a much yeah bigger... I, I think that those days of of players tapping each other up when they're going into national duty are over I think that if they're tapping each other up they're probably just doing it all the time yeah. Yeah, <laughs> agents are probably getting on the phone aren't they yeah. whenever they want so to me, it doesn't really um, matter anymore. That I, w- kind of... I wonder who picks who they room with. Mm. Yeah. Well, they probably put the new lads together, I'd imagine. Maybe if there's under-21s. So? Who... Yeah, I'd imagine so. If there was under-21s and stuff, I'm if sure. If you're a centre-back, you wouldn't room with another centre-back. No, no. I'd just room whoever I was mates with. I think if most England players will already have their room and partners, you've been yeah, in squad and if you're for the new time. the newbie, you get... The spit. you're the spur aren't you as Henry would say maybe yeah. but if you're, if you're going in there with someone who's an under 21 who you've played there with then put them you know in there them. you yeah. know them or a teammate from your own club I suppose but yeah, there won't be any of those will there only Jordan yeah but um, yeah. no I think it's a, I think it's positive because I think we can't sell Everton on much at the moment but if we can at least say to players who are already with us well you you can be an England regular while playing for us. Jordan's the perfect example. Yeah. yeah, and if that even if that's not enough, that could be enough for a for a for a brand. I don't think it will be enough for Brantwaite just because of our circumstances. But say we were in better circumstances, you could say to Brantwaite, "You go the Euros this summer, and you stick with Everton for the next two years. You're going to World Cup. Mm-hmm. If you move, you may put that at risk. You may put that. And now I don't think that'll happen with." Jared, because I think he's a ta- such a good talent that wherever he goes, but it has happened before, and I think that's what keeps Jordan has kept Jordan mm. Pickford happy yeah. for this length of time. And a lot of players want do want to play at the high. Of course, they do. Everyone wants to play. Anyone who ever does anything wants to be at the highest level they can be at. Mm. So if you're saying, well, it's not Champions League, but by playing for us, you're going to go the World Cup or going to go the Euros. Then if that keeps someone around for another couple of years, I don't mind that whatsoever. Um, and if that's the if that's the carrot, then then so be it. So anyone who forget professionals, but um, fans do have influences on who are perceived to be good, bad, and indifferent players. You mm. may have noticed, yeah. Then the more fans who see how wonderful Jared Brantwaite is, the better it is for Everton. Yeah, and non-English fans aren't going to have ever seen him before. They'll probably mm. watch the game. Brazilians will watch it. Oh, crikey, he's one of us. Mm. <laughs> well, of course, we live in a especially if. You know, shared Man United muted with them, but whatever they need is two or three oh, linked yeah. with them. They need, they need. You know, we're not in a very strong financial position, so we need two or three, don't we, to mm. to be bidding for them. Mm. And if you do get that thing of, I like the look of him, we need to buy him from fa- fans. Can generate that. We we know that ourselves. Mm. Fans can generate um, a a cent. You know, they can they can put that on their own club. We've we've had that before where fans. There's been a clamour for a player and. Fans have pushed the agenda. I don't know whether that ever gets as high as like you know football clubs making a decision on I think that. It does. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I mean, I've said here before that um, Everton as a club and certainly the owner had their doubts about Cooman before he signed his contract, and mm. part of what you know he was cajoled around was, but the fans already know and they're very happy. Yeah, and therefore. Kuman probably got the job in the end mm. because the fans were excited by the idea of him being the manager. Yeah. Okay, it didn't turn out, mm. but if if it had been, say, Mishiri had, had doubts about Benitez, mm. the story would have been, well, the fans don't want him, so it's an easier decision for him not to do it. Yeah. And I think, um, well, no, and there has been, I think, I think um, Delafeu, when he came back, I think that was a lot of that seemed to be fueled by fans. Mm. Um, and I think when we saw uh, Lukaku doing the celebration sure. at West Ham before he came, it was almost like a sign to the fans. Yeah. And there was another one then I just had in my head, and I've just it's just completely gone out of my head. But there was certainly like Landon Donovan when he came Donovan's back. Donovan's a good example. Uh, yeah. Pina when he came back mm-hmm. the second time, there was a there was a clamour for him on on fans saying, you know, we need to bring him back. And it, that almost like put, I don't know whether it did or not, but. That almost, there was a sense of Evertonians pushing the club in the direction of, of you need to get this fella. Why mm. you know why not? We're, no, but I think the way that helped was I think it, sometimes it's helped where fans have said we have no issues. Wayne might be similar. Mm. Wayne Rooney, where it's like fans going, no, we don't really have an issue with this. Mm. I know it's slightly different because it's more about 
whether a fan base is open for the return of a player. But saying if a fan base starts putting pressure on its own club to say, why aren't we mm. going after this player? Um, then I'm sure it helps. And I think if he, if he plays for England and a few people do get to see him, the other side of him is that he's not in an Everton shirt. You know, yeah. he's not. You might have watched him. The only highlight you might have seen of him was against Man City and, of mm. course, Harlem brushing past them. And yet we know in that game, of having watched the whole game, that he had a brilliant game. Mm. And it was just that one moment that could have happened to anybody. Yeah, every, all, all um, industries have focus groups, mm. you know, and, and by focus groups, I don't mean a shareholders association yeah. or a fans <laughs> forum or a fan advisory board, but they have rank and file potential yeah. customers who are prepared to say what they really mean mm. and really feel right and and football hasn't really exploited that yet no that sort of thing but for me it's clear and we'll never know which is the point you're making it's clear that Brantwaite got into Everton's team earlier than he would have done if the fans hadn't been point. clamoring for it's it because it made it an easier decision for the manager mm. putting youngsters into a Premier League particularly a defender yeah. is really difficult yeah. and absolutely the worst as central defenders and perhaps only keepers are harder to make if they're young and very good yeah. you go but they're only 19 you know mm. sort of thing um but it, if the fans are on side with it or you feel the fans are on side then you get a bit of a leeway the decision goes the wrong way mm. um and that's where again fan that, activism can 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 influence that's greatly. where it's quite funny isn't it and just going back to you know a focus group actually i think it's something everton need massively as a mm. focus group I know some people would say a fans forum, but I don't think fans forum is a fan, is no, a, is a, is the same thing. No, it's not. It's something Everton massively need is is um, to get a collection of fans together to sit down and 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 actually run things by them. And uh, as I said, that people might say, well, that's just a fans forum, but I don't see that as a fans forum. I, no, I don't. I, I mean, I mean, people who are in maybe privileged positions of of, of understanding certain things. I, I agree. And and I think for 20 plus years, we can go back a lot further, mm. but let's just pick 20 plus years. Our football club got itself into a position where they believed, or whether they believed mm. it or not, it was how it was projected, that the, the way the football club had it at the top level, I mean, mm. had its best understanding of the temperature of the fan base yeah. was the chairman. Yeah. That, who was yeah. so detached from... <laughs> the days of a rank and file football fan because he's the chairman mm. because he lives in london because of his certain age and so on yeah, yeah. but even he knew benitez was wrong of course and he mm. knew allardyce was wrong and, and and what that plays to if you are going to have focus groups if you are going to seek to not let fans make decisions no but if you are going to let them Take tell the you how, yeah absolutely you've got to be prepared to listen and mm. it can't just be a lip service thing where you do it because either regulation forces you to, as it does with things like fabs and fans forums and what have you, um, but take it really seriously and, and exploit it for your, for your own ends, both positively and, if mm. you like, a bit Machiavellian, you know. Use those focus groups to influence the wider fan base for things you know you're going to mm. do and might not be as well received, yeah? No, no. And that's where they can use independent fan media and, and, and so on to do those things as no, well. No, you're absolutely spot on. Um it's one thing I've been thinking about recently is that is is having is having something like that. But I mean that takes us on to so so someone taking the temperature or pat patting yourself on the back. There's a piece in the athletic today. Oh Paddy yeah, Paddy's from Paddy Boyland. Yeah, yeah. Um what did you make of that piece? Well there was quite a bit of chatter on our you you're in it. But, yeah, yeah. But you've been to have your eyes done, haven't you? I have been to get my eyes done. Okay, so you might not have read in our, in the WhatsApp group the one that we're in together. A fair amount of chatter around that really. Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I think, you know, it's 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 a sort of piece um someone like Paddy or, or someone you know in that job will be right. It's a long piece by the way, people. Mm. So it's well and it's well worth a read, so dig it out yourself if you subscribe. Because of course there's no game to talk about. Yeah. But the further down it I got and I I'm not being rude. I don't think. Mm. I hope not. I'm sure Paddy will let me know if I if it does come across as rude. Mm. A, a lot of it seemed to be very much focused on uh, stuff from the club's perspective. Yeah. Um, it, if you've not read it, people, it, it fundamentally is is about Kevin Thelwell and what a great job he's doing, really, uh, and and how the constraints placed upon Kevin and his team mm. are actually the reason why we're in part of the reason why yeah. we're in the, in the situation that we're in and you guys know this and we, we we did an hour and a half and two shows last night that my view is you know uh, leadership's um 
main role is to remove excuses. Yeah. Right. And and sadly, the article reads like a fair number of excuses for not being able to do better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 I just thought that it was interesting in that sense. Um, it refers to Everton a lot. You know, Everton think this, and I don't know who that's referring to. Yeah. It's clearly not referring to Colin Chong. Mm. It's clearly not referring to you know Mashiri or John Spellman. So you know, words board level. Yeah. If, if that Kevin means sorry, big one. If, if that um, Everton means at Richard Kenyon's level, yeah. Then I'm surprised. So it, maybe it's just at a level where people think they're getting a bit of stick and they don't yeah. have the wherewithal yeah. and the authority to, to to push past it. And I have some sympathy for that bit, mm. but. I'll never be an advocate that you've got to wait for something else to happen before you can do a, d a better job. Yeah. Everyone can do it, a better job. So it basically off. says in the article, doesn't it, that everyone's doing the best job they possibly can. Yeah, yeah. And I think it concludes with something like, um, I could read it out, but that'd be really anorakish. But if I, it, it's something like nothing really good can be done at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Um, because of the external th stuff that's yeah. going on. Um, and I think that paragraph's probably not right, I think, because the very best people would do the very best that they can. Yeah. And, and it just read like people have dropped into a, a holding pattern of, I have an excuse for why I'm not doing better. Yeah. That's not to say they're not doing a good job already, Yeah, yeah. but you should still be striving each day and everywhere and all that sort of stuff to do better and better. And, you know, and I, as a fan, do not think our recruitment has been as wonderful as the mm -hmm. article implies, right? Um, I, I think, yes, it's been constrained by funds and so on, but I also think the funds we spent, we could have spent better. Yeah. And, and, and what else did it say? It said something about because of a lack of a functioning board, Kevin is running football operations. Uh, I, I, maybe I don't know what that word means, mm. but I thought that's what he was I recruited that was for. Job, yeah. <laughs> I thought that's what he was recruited for. And it also writes a paragraph about what the role of a director of football is. Mm. And it omits to say making the first team win football matches. Yeah. It, it, it looks very administrative. Mm. So clearly, you know, if, if Paddy's a, oh, sorry, rephrase that. Paddy is a journalist mm. and he will ask the club for example, what they think the role of a sporting director is. Yeah. And I guess that's what he's put in his article. And and, and Paddy's good enough to mm. know that some of us are going to read that and go, oh, so that's what the club think Thelwell's job is, yeah. which comes across as very much administrative. And due to a lack of, lack of a functioning board, he's running football operations. Mm. That then offers the view, if the board was functioning, who would be running football operations? <laughs> We don't want yeah, yeah. a bloody board running football operations, right? Mm. Now, maybe that's just a phrase that comes out because that's allegedly what Jim Ratcliffe's doing. Yeah. And therefore, you have to have a board-level person accountable for football mm. operations, right? But you know, my view is if, if the person accountable for football operations is the director of football, have him on the board then. Yeah. There's only three of them on the board. Stick Kev on it. And then Colin and Mashiri and John Spellman can hear the challenges the man faces. Blaming lack of money isn't the answer. Hmm. Um, there's a good example in there about Kudos, about hmm. how we spotted him first and stuff like that. We were, we were talking about that before, weren't we? On, before we started, it was like you mentioned there was three players they talked about who they'd identify but couldn't afford. It's like, so why are you bothering? Yeah. Why are you going, why are you wasting? Great, you've identified them. And then if, if the first part is you've identified it and then the second part is we can't afford them, then you move on. Yeah. You move on to targets that you can hmm. afford and actually actually can do a little bit of hard work for you know Anana the year before he moved to Lille let's say those kind of signings mm. that we we are aren't really making you know and and that to me is why are you why are you patting yourself on the back because you can see a good player Baz tells me about 25 players a day mm. you know what I mean it, it's no disrespects to Baz but identifying players who in quotes look good mm. shouldn't be difficult should it? Not if it's not if it's your actual job. Well, no. Well, it's not Baz's no, job. No, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. If it's your actual job, it shouldn't be but, any problem. You know, so, so Baz could probably write. He's sitting on the sofa there now. He could probably. If we picked a position, you know, a right-sided, pacey mm. midfield player. Call him a winger, if you will. I'm sure if we gave Baz ten minutes, he'd give us the name of ten different players, probably in multiple leagues. Right now, none of them might be possible to get over the line. Yeah, yeah. 
but that's like a long list. Mm. And and we've talked many times on the... Got one for 10 million, well, the there you go. If you didn't hear what Baz just shouted yeah, from... Go. What Baz just shouted from the background is Bournemouth found one for 10 million. He scored a cracker last night. Yeah. Mm. So you've, you've got to say, well, we have to know what our budgets are. We yeah. have to know all those sorts of things. But part of your job in any football club is to monitor the whole... And it does talk yeah. about that Kevin, you know, part of... Not Kev personally, I guess, but his team monitor managers and, and managerial trends mm. and all those sorts of things. And that's right, because you've got to watch the competition, haven't you? Right. Yeah, yeah. And you, I would imagine out of everybody, Kev's the one who sees more of the, our competition than anyone because he goes to every game, right? And our scouts are off looking yeah, at players, yeah. aren't they? Um, but it just comes across the way the article presents it as, as a bit of a, we're doing the best that could possibly don't be done in the circumstances mm. and nothing better can do, be done until something changes. Yeah. Um, you know, if you had a chance, notwithstanding it was your eyes you were getting sorted, so you perhaps couldn't read. We were having a good chat this morning around, somebody said in, in our WhatsApp group of the culture of the football club, and it won't be fixed until we can get away from Goodison, mm. right? And you know my view, well, you can anticipate my reaction to that. Goodison isn't the reason that we are broken. Mm. Goodison isn't the reason that the culture is more no. let's try and not lose rather than let's try and win. Their mindsets and yeah, they yeah. come from leadership, right? And the issue, or big issue right now, is a lack of leadership. Yeah. And perversely, even when there was lots more people on the board, we still lacked leadership. Yeah, yeah. But leadership exists every layer of an organisation. Mm. You know, seek you know, seek forgiveness, don't seek approval. You know, but unfortunately, because of the autocratic approach of the last two chief execs and the passive behaviour of the chair, who allowed those two chief execs to basically put a very hierarchical culture in place, mm. most people within the football club have learned probably the hard way yeah. that you don't show an initiative, mm. you don't go against what your, your superiors have said and done, you do as you've told, right? And that's the thing, and we talked about it on the sofa last night, if the culture gets changed, because it has to, yeah. there'll be a load of people at the club who, who will leave because they can't cope with the mm -hmm. new culture, but there'll be a load of people at the club, you know, and I hope this is suddenly, the, the bigger group, who will fine. feel released yeah. and can show their... Suddenly find their voices. You look at all the CVs on LinkedIn of the people at the club, they're all very bright mm -hmm. people. So then you have to say, well, why aren't the outcomes yeah, yeah. showing? What's stopping because them? Because someone's constraining them. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, as I said when me and Dave were talking... If, if, a, if a manager, or, you know, a, 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 you know, you know, your line manager mm. in the business, if the job, as I always say, mine was, was to remove all the excuses for you failing to perform, mm. then what's left is you, right? Mm. And one of those excuses at the moment seems to be, well, it's all hard and difficult, and until something changes, well, we, it, we can't perform better. It's funny, isn't it? Because we've just been talking about reading the room, having, you know, having focus, uh, focus groups, and, groups stuff. and stuff, and understanding. I don't know if a piece like that really does any benefit for for where we are as a club at the moment because I think most people and that's not that's not into you know that's Paddy had a, Paddy's got a job to do and he's wrote the piece and he's about providing Everton well content worth the read. and that's all that that's not an issue. Yeah, it's well worth it. But the it read. does feel like once again Everton are patting themselves on the back mm. for the job well done where everybody else will just go mm, not doing a very good job now. There will be factors, of course. We know what all the factors are, but. I think a lot of Evertonians will be this is ill judged and ill timed. Just right now we we're not really sure we need to be patting ourselves back on the back with ten I, games to go to the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's patting people on the back. I think but it has got the flavour of comfort blankets yeah. that we're doing okay. And and I think what's interesting is it says the article says that Everton believe that Again, I, please don't quote me because I'm not paraphrasing, and you know I'm not quoting yeah, yeah. it right. But but the article fundamentally says Everton, whoever that means, right, <laughs> believe that Kevin and Sean are doing yeah. a really good job, right, or a good job, right. Now there's a subjective one here, which let me just throw at you. Go on, right. Can you do a good job at something, mm. and therefore be heads doing a good job, but not being doing as good as you should? Mm. And we never see any comment coming out of our football club about where's the bar mm. and where are we in relation to it. It's always like it could be worse, therefore we're doing a good yeah, job. Yeah. You've got to look up. You've got to look mm. forward. 
Dwight McNeil, go that way. Yeah. Stop turning and going back. And we keep having these chats and the analogies between the sporting behaviours and the non-sporting behaviours, they're all part of the same culture. Yeah. If you're a bit concerned, stop, have a think and retrace your steps mm. rather than pushing on, right? Um, and and but if the culture doesn't allow the staff to take chances, mm. I don't mean big chances, but go out on a bit of a limb. Yeah, believe you can convince the fan base to buy red shirts or something. <laughs> yeah, sort of thing. Um, but if you don't try, you don't know. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's no no such thing as no idea, right? Bad idea, rather mm. rather no idea, right? So ideas can be captured, you can then filter them, you can decide what you're going to... And these are all motherhood, you know, apple pie stuff, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, and so anyone who bothers to read a management book will get all this crap. Mm. But the, the reason why I used to say back in the day was it's not what you do, it's the way that you do it. The difference between winning pre football matches in the Premier League and not winning them isn't about what you're doing per se, it's mm. how you do it. Yeah. You can have a solid defence, you can have a solid midfield, you can have competent strikers and lose every game, mm. right? Another team can have less effective players than you've got, maybe even a less structure, but if their mindset's right. Mm. We saw last night, well, I didn't watch it, but Baz did, I don't know if you did, but no. everything that was good about Luton got them a three-goal lead. Yeah. Everything that's bad about them lost the game. Yeah. In a nutshell, mm. right? Really hard working, bold, go in the right direction, their goals that way. Mm. They're playing away at a place that Everton have found very difficult over the years because yeah. of compactness and so on and so forth. And they got into a three goal lead and couldn't hold it. Yeah. Right. So, so that stuff happens in business as well. Mm. That you can be a certain standard just by doing the basics mm. competently. Yeah. But the differentiators, and I'm not talking marginal gains, I'm just talking differentiators, is then what you do when you build upon that. And and you know my view, I got quite emotive about it months ago when Kevin publicly stated that we can't plan ahead because of mm. the difficult situation we're in. That is a real big red flag yeah. because that's waiting for something to happen. That means you're going to be reactive. Yeah, yeah. And it's the people who are proactive who win in the end. Yeah, Always is. Always is. But any time someone says can't, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 got to have a can do culture. Yeah, that's it, and it's got to be realistic. Yeah, you know, it's got to be realistic. I mean, I mean, the article I think also references that when Kevin came in, the the Everton ambitions were, despite struggling in the league, were to push on and get into Europe, and it almost dismisses that as naive. Mm. Now, no one's going to say that Everton should get in Europe next season if they're in the Premier League, for example. But no one should be saying it's not possible either. Yeah. It should and, be an and, aim, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's that balance about and, and reappraising, mm. you know. Um, it, it talks about, who, who was I talking to? Again, it was on Twitter. I think it might have been um, Joe Thomas. You know, he, he talked about how the manager was going to have speak to the players while they're away yeah. about how's it going, lads. Yeah. I think it do, doesn't that happen every week? day every yeah. day it should happen yeah you do it one to one every day and then you collect you know what i mean but it almost come across as because we're good it's like yeah, us yeah. having an away day yeah, yeah when we have our away days a couple of times a year we don't we do talk about stuff mm. we don't talk at any other time but none of it's whether ned wears long trousers or not these couldn't legs even people couldn't even find come in today and his first words were these legs are so white i thought i'd left trousers sorry in my car in my car they were the first words. And then he said, I was like, what? Don't you have like a wardrobe? No, I keep, I always keep a spare pair of kecks in my car. Yeah. It's unique. He's not in sliders though, so that's... No, no, he's that's not. Well, good. he's been warned about his sliders. He's got sliders in my car. He's been warned about his sliders. I always have kecks in my car. Yeah. When I come in my footy gear. I can put yeah. kecks on while I'm in work. And then when I finish work, I can put my kecks back in my car. I've, I got, I got, I got, I got, sorry, sorry. Do you not own a wardrobe? Yeah. But so why wouldn't you just, while you're in the house, put the trousers on? Because these are footy kecks. So wh what what difference kecks, does it make? They're just kecks I can wear for footy. So why wouldn't you just still keep them in the house? Um, because it's just easy to have some in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If I'm hearing you right, this means that when you, I think they might be in the garage though. So when you <laughs> go to footy, you just throw your trousers in the car and they don't come out the car ever. 
Yeah, I put them on to come in here and then take them off. No, what I'm, back what, what I'm, what I'm, punk. what I'm stressing is, yes, <laughs> what I'm stressing is, is these pants don't get washed. <laughs> yeah, they don't stay in my car. They only go in my car on a Thursday. But I think I put my footy gear in uh, the other day. Yeah. And I, I forgot to take the pants out, so I left yeah. them in there. But I think they're in my garage. Why would they be in your garage? <laughs> Sometimes I put my footy gear in my garage when I put my music gear in. Why? Um, I understand your music gear, but why would you not take your footy gear in the house? Again, just to stress, I meant, I, to I, I be take, washed. I take the pants in, but not like the boots and okay, the okay. balls. Yeah, like... I, so I, right now, you don't know where your pants are, do you? I think they're in the garage. But you don't know, though. You don't know where they are. They're probably in the garage. You're taking them with you on holiday? Um, no, no, no. No, no. So you don't need to find them on holiday. I'm not playing football on holiday. Yeah. No, but you are going on holiday with two couples. Yeah. Five of them, Baz, are going on holiday. His gonna... mate and his girlfriend, his other mate and his girlfriend, and Ned. Where's he up? Wales. So he probably needs your guidance because you're Mr. Camping. Love Wales. Well, tents camping. Well, I've only got a one man tent. No, anyway, but that's so. camping. Well, what happens if you pull? Well, you go on camp. Okay. Okay. Pull up, John. A cow on <laughs> a camping site. All right. That's fine. Sheep. Okay. We got, we got. Um, are you driving. Uh, I'm probably going to jump in with one of the couples. Oh, we have what a shot! <laughs> what a shot! <laughs> what a shot! <laughs> Ned, Ned does not drive. Ned does not drive anywhere. Shocking. I'm going driving on my own. I don't have any gear. I'm not taking a fire pit or anything. Just gonna have you got any trousers in your boots? That's gear. Um, I'll probably just wear trousers on the day. <laughs> when are you going? Uh, Easter. People. Wales is going to be really yeah. interesting over Easter weekend because stay away from Ned will be there. Going to Delago, Gallagher, in Gwynedd, Gwynedd, yeah, Wales, Gwynedd, Snow, Snowdonia, National in a Park. tent, in a field. Fair play, Ned. I love camping. I just like making, like, just sitting around a fire with sausages and stuff. It's great. Sitting around no a iPad, fire yeah, because with... you're in the middle of a field. No technology, no electric, just music. Through, Does that mean they're going to have to suffer you with an acoustic guitar? Well, there's, there'll be a couple of us with guitars. Oh, right, okay. we we'll do a little band. That sounds tremendous. We're going to do some um, country music and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We did uh, folk music. Deliverance last time. <laughs> ling, 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 ling. Good stuff. Brilliant. Did yeah. You yeah. Interesting. Interesting. While he was, whatever you call it, is it cooking sausages mm. on the end of a Love stick sausage. or something? Didn't you, hang on, didn't those sausages... Give you food poisoning? No, 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 no. I cooked my own sausages. Yeah. Because I know how they should be done. Okay. Properly. And then someone else did their own and they got food poisoning. Uh, okay. Sausages. Fair enough. I'm really good with meat, so. <laughs> the double entendre yeah. in many of your knows, answers, yeah. Knows how to run. So that was a segue to yeah. calm us down from the very serious bit about yeah. cultural change and organisational structures. Yeah. yeah. No, um, I... Bottom line is it's it's slow news, isn't it? Because there's no oh, it is. You know, so and it's... and and the article itself is well worth reading, right? Because we might be talking crap. It's fluff, in it at the end of the day because it is just <clears throat> it is just a story about people patting themselves on the back. And that's all it is. I mean, if you want a real if you want to have a real story about Everton, then go and speak to people on the outside of Everton and, and ask them to look into Everton rather than. Ask Everton. Everton are never people at Everton are never going to say they're doing a bad job. Of mm. course they're not. So I don't. I don't. Paddy's got to fill his quota, and he's and again, I, yeah. I'm, what do you mean the, again? Again what? I was just about to say the Athletic just seem to get all the stories from Everton. Oh, I see. Right. They don't okay. really seem to get other people. They don't. are quite big. That doesn't mean they should have the monopoly. On on no. on story. I I just feel like other people don't get these stories. That's all. That's not so bad about Paddy. I just mean uh, organisations don't seem to get these kind of stories. Um, well, I might be wrong. Do you but mean independent stuff? Not us. No, no, not us. Not us. But I'd rather Paddy and the Athletic get a story than Dave Maddox and the Daily Mirror. No, I'd like to see Joe Thomas get some of these. Stories. Well, the Echo clearly, but he's been on a naughty stuff. No, and I'd, I'd I'd like to see Joe get some of these. Stuff. I yeah. just. Um, yeah, it's just because he did a long read the other day, didn't yeah. he, Joe? But it was, uh, yeah, you're right. It was almost like an outsider comedy. It, it might be wrong. I might be wrong. It might be just the way it comes across sometimes. Joe will get it when he goes to the athletic. Yeah. yeah, it might just it might come across wrong. Uh, it might be wrong. And I said that's not too bad. He's, it, I just it it just 
it just screams of Everton patting themselves on the back again because, as I said, it's more... It's... Do you think that... Sorry, I'm going to put go on, words go in on. your mouth. No, no, say what you want. You're, you're, you're in the foothills of saying that the football club... I'm going to... Go on, yeah. go on, John. Only goes to outlets that are going to do stories they don't have a problem with. Yes. Okay. Well, that's... On, that, I mean, that's... You that's... know, Joe's done a lot of provocative Yeah, yeah, no, that's stuff. 100%. That's... Yeah. That's a hundred percent right. Right. Okay. Um, because the and act, that's part of the culture that needs. That's to be part of the culture that needs to change. Is yeah. that it's dead nice them sitting down and having these little powwows with people, mm. but it's most fans. I think Everton right now, and maybe this is why I didn't on the article. I think we are at a with with ten games to go. I think there's a if you look at what's being said out there, social media, whatever, WhatsApp groups. Yeah, yeah. Everton fans are very much in two camps at the moment. There's the people who think Kev, uh, Sean Dyche is miracle doing worker. a terrible job oh, and people sorry. who think he's a miracle worker. Mm. And I think... Truth somewhere in between. Everton might be just trying to pull people towards the miracle worker side of Why? things. Because there's 10 games to go and you want to try and make everything as nice as possible, obviously. Because it makes the recruitment... The, the stories... The stories coming out are... Have you read the article, Baz? If you read it, lots of it looks like yeah. it's... Well, this no. Well, this is the thing, right? So the, the stories coming out of the... The stories, obviously, coming out the club, the first thing they did was when they got to Portugal, they sat with Darwin Shaw and Dice because, again, it might be reading the temperature of the room and saying there'll be loads of people going, why are you going to Portugal? I've seen loads of people going, why are you on a... We've had, we've had that. I was on I was on Radio Merseyside on Monday night and someone rung up absolutely fuming going, why, really? are, you, why are you on a... Jo-? Someone first of all, someone <laughs> rung up and kicked off on me, which was hilarious. Um, well, you're an easy target, right? Um, because because, I'd, sure fault, because yeah. I'd said, Sean, I shouldn't be making excuses like uh, we don't score enough goals because people oh, aren't prepared enough. to get a hit. That's nonsense to me, but someone mm-hmm. thought that was a... That's fair. But then someone rung up and said, well, why are they in Portugal when they should be in the bloody Highlands? I was, I, which is he, you know, I'm just like, whatever, mate. It's not to do with me. I don't even get the question. Well, they should be working harder. They should be out there, you know. not Change why, is as good as a rest. I'm I'm with, listen, I'm with you. Yeah, warm yeah. warm weather go, is good for the, warm, is uh, for the soul yeah. <laughs> um, when things are. But people see it as a bit of a like, why are they getting, why are they getting something good from well, when I they see. bad? Uh, they probably don't see it as good. No, no, they don't. They are all multi-millionaires. No, no, they're yeah, working. So. They're out there yeah, working really, yeah. really hard. According yeah, yeah. to some people on social media, um, I'm sure they are. So it it's about pulling, probably trying to pull people over, isn't it, to the old side? So it's trying to convince people. No, no, we are doing everything we can, and it's not Sean's fault, or it's not it's not Kevin Fell's fault. It's actually because we we're, we're in such a because you can almost say now at the football club. In 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 so many words, this club's a mess. Yeah. You, you can say it now, can't you? It, it's it it can't be a nice place to work. No, no. Tw- and twelve, but twelve months ago, you obviously couldn't say that. Uncertainty, yeah. doubt, all those sorts of things. You know, which we can put at many people's doors, including the Premier League, mm. right? But if you start then trying to spin a narrative that oh, you know, poor manager, mm. oh, poor director of football. Yeah they can't do a good job mm. because of all this, then actually you might dilute that perception yeah. because we need to recognise the football club is in a mess. Mm. It's a product of years of um, almost selfish, mm. you know, misbehaviours by a, a series of chief execs who are allowed to do what they were allowed, oh, yeah. whatever, 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 right? And then a crazy owner who mm. probably because... And an egotistical chairman as well. All of that, yeah, right? Yeah. But, but both the chair and yeah, the yeah. owner almost looked past what the problem was. <laughs> they, they they started trying to treat symptoms. We bought a wrong player, so yeah. let's buy another wrong player. Rather than resetting and saying, we need to build this up from the ground and do it properly, mm. right? And and as I'm often fond of saying, it's never too late to do the right thing, mm. right? But if, if there's still a degree of denial inside our football club, that the job that the people currently inside the football club are doing is as good as they can do, I think that's a concern. Mm. If 
you've got the left and the right where if the left are the ones saying it's all broken and Deitch mm. needs to be sacked and all that rubbish, right? Um, then it's not that extreme either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th these people are operating in trying circumstances. But I yeah, think as yeah. soon as you start trying to sell to a key stakeholder, and presumably the sellers to fans, yeah, yeah. that we're actually doing a really good job, you'll get very little traction with football fans, me included, yeah, yeah. that you're, you're doing a really good job because I don't think you are. No, no. Because the league table notwithstanding it's where it is, right? 31 points. Is that what we would have? Yeah, yeah. Right? So we'd have 31 points at this stage of the season and we would have a degree of comfort that we're not going to get relegated. Mm. That's an absolute minimum expectation. Yeah, yeah. We would be sat here, and we talked about it briefly, me and Baz, the other day. We would be sat here bitching and whinging mm. if we hadn't had a points deduction that we haven't won a goddamn yeah, yeah. game for 11 games, that Europe was there for the taking and we balls deal. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, but at least we're not getting relegated yeah. type of thing. But that last bit, at least we're not getting relegated, is not the objective of this no, football club. No. It cannot possibly be. No. In the David Moyes world and all those old school managers yeah, yeah. who would be interviewed and they would say, the first target is 40 points because mm. that used to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah always. That's not the same as saying our first, you know, our objective is we can put our flip-flops on as soon as we achieve 40 points, although mm. someone like Bournemouth tend to behave like that, yeah? Um, but it doesn't mean you're doing a good job, not yeah. the best job. No, it doesn't. But by the same token, it doesn't mean you're automatically doing a bad job either, yeah. right? Um, and after a couple of years, if we haven't got our football operations structure sorted out, someone should be asking the director of football, why not? And, and, and that's not to be critical of him, in the first instance, because when stuff that should have happened hasn't happened, we then need to know why, mm. right? And if the why is because the leadership told me not to, my boss told me not to, then that's the bubble you live in. Mm. If people won't let you do your job and your reputation is going to be compromised by people not letting you do your job, you either get those people to let you do your job or you go to another employer. Yeah, You can't spin a narrative to particularly football fans who look far more closely than anyone else would look mm. yeah you can't spin a narrative you're doing a good job of the general uh, the room says you're not what mm. you can do is show how you've made it better than it was which is not the same yeah no, I, but i see no evidence that it was better than it was no i i think just going off what you said there but saying about that there is that thing of well if we had 31 points you know, we should have 31 points. But then my answer to that is we'd have 30 points if we'd done what we should have done against Brighton and West Ham. They're, Already, you mean? They're like, yeah, Even they're, with the deduction. They're like yeah. two they're, they're two games I look at and go, we have just blown a huge, huge chance to basically be safe. If we had 30 points right now, we'd be sitting there going, we only need two more wins and we'll get that and everyone mm. will be a lot more calmer. So it's that easy to go. We should have thirty-one points. We should have. We should be sitting here with the point deduction, having having thirty points or having thirty-one points. We've blown ch chances in the last few weeks. Yeah. If you talk about before, right? WhatsApp groups. We're in a WhatsApp group last night where you got big smiley faces, bloody looting mm. when they went one nil up. Yeah. Now I was watching um, the end of the gentleman. Oh yeah. So the next after the one nil, the next time I looked, it was three all. Yeah. <laughs> Right, um, but I see that they were three nil up at half time, yeah. and I'm thinking we're going to Bournemouth mm. our next game. That's all we need to know. Yeah, Luton were three nil up at half time, and it was you, mm. you, you cheeky monkey, mm. as my uh, granddaughter would say, who said, "But they're in top form now, Bournemouth, because <laughs> yeah. they could have been three nil down to win four three. <laughs> right, so it's a mindset thing, yeah. isn't it? I would focus on they were three nil down. Someone else might focus on they scored four goals in the second half to turn it round. So you know, but that was when they, eh? Yeah. yeah. But that was when they, they had nothing to lose. Yeah. Right. And so then you're into how you set up for that game. Mm. You know. Um, but it's all about culture and mindset and behaviours. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. But um, did he? Yeah. Because you were watching it, weren't you? But it's. No, I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know why that article needed to be written, other than there's no game and it's a bit of fluff. And as you just, and also what it says to me is, it's the, it is the, um, recruitment side of people getting their story out there as well. It does read like that because yeah. if you are 
if you're if you are if you fall on Sean Dyke just doing a good job, then it's bad players. And if it's bad players, then it's bad recruitment. Mm. So it is almost like they're getting it. The, Sean Dyche has his chance to get his side out all the time because he speaks to the media. Mm-hmm. And he's the only one who speaks to the media. Um, but then this is Kevin Fowler's fault or people at Everton's fault. Have weekly or 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 or, or a monthly press conference then. Get you get your come out and speak to the media then rather than what I look at as a puff piece, which is just a one sided article about every how you're all doing amazing. Somebody, I don't think it says that. No, to be honest. someone at Everton is not doing amazing, or is not doing the job to the best of their ability, and or is con- is doing it under such terrible circumstances. And, and this might just be the first one of like we're doing our job fine. Ten days before the season, uh, ten games before the season ends, we we've done our job. It's up to them now to do their job. There, when you say we've done our job, I guess you mean the. Recruitment, recruitment side. team, yeah. Um, their job for this season concluded on the first of Feb, didn't it? Yeah. When you can't do anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was probably concluded before that. No, and I know, before. and we all know. Yeah, exactly. Because we all no targets. That's what I mean. We know January. No one bought anyone. Yeah, yeah. And maybe our plan was never to buy anyone in January anyway, and so therefore, as Baz is shouting from over there, their work was done in the sense of the squad was set yeah. at the end of August. And therefore, from then onwards, it is all on the players you've already got, notwithstanding in six months, maybe a quick burst from an academy player might have them ended up in a first-team squad, but very unlikely, yeah? Mm. And that's not recruitment per se, that's coaching, yeah? yeah. yeah? Um, and and so, yeah, they're getting ready, one assumes, for the next window. Mm. Um, and you're back around that planning thing. Um, in my experience, if you're not getting direction from the leadership which in our club tends to mean the board, do what you think is right, you know, and Kevin and his crew just do keep doing their job to the best of their ability. And then when you get to the point where you need to know how much money you've got, you're prepped for it, Yeah, you know? Um, I mean, the article talks about the improvements in recruitment, you know, in the sense of finding young players and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not convinced that Anara and Dwight McNeil were good reference points, yeah, because that's what it calls out. Um, it's fifty million worth of talent. That's fifty million the pounds. The does Baz. That's fifty million pounds worth yeah. of talent. That's yeah. not fine. Dwight McNeil had played a hundred games in the Premier League. Mm. That's not finding talent. Mm. I'm just telling you the. No, I know, I know, John, but I'm being angry. This is me <laughs> being angry. That is not. I will, I will, I will give Everton some pr- finding Jared Brantwaite and John Stones before and John you. Stones and even Mason Holgate. Yeah, is finding talent. Finding Dwight McNeil is not talent. He was on match of the day every week. That's not talent. I get it. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm not. I'm sh- I'm sh- shouting in that direction, John. So, so if we talk about <laughs> continuous improvements in a business, yeah, let's focus on Anana, yeah. right? Because he is a talent, right? Um, then when you did the review, you would say, Anana, we did well getting Anana, right? And one of the reasons we did get well getting Anana because he was had more of a profile mm. than we would normally get because other clubs should have got him, yeah? And so you then say, should we have got him sooner? Mm. Yeah. Were we just the first movers who saw him after someone else had already done the find? Mm. And I suspect yes, right? But could you have got him sooner? And this is the one Baz bangs on about a lot. Mm. It's all well and good buying that player for 20, but yeah. you could have bought him for three last year. It's Man United, isn't it? All of a sudden, they've realised Jared Branthwaite exists. The motive for us to talk yeah, about yeah. Man United. They're the biggest, hairiest organisation on the planet. And you might almost argue, why do they have a squoting, a squoting, squoting? Why do they have a scouting team at all? Because yeah. they can wait for somebody else to develop players yeah, yeah. and then just grab them. Yeah. Henry Winter's done a comment today about um, an, an um, EFL owner basically saying, "Hey, Premier League, you should give us money mm. because we pr- find these players for you." Yeah, yeah. You know, said that yesterday. You know. Me? But it's a bit of a one-sided story because it implies unless you give us money, we won't find these players for you. Good players will always be found. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and it's just that EFL clubs... Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. EFL clubs can pick up lots of players wherever they pick them up from. Yeah. And those that come out the other end and, and make a career... 
make a career in the EFL, become a, a yeah, subgroup. Yeah. group who become proper pros, playing the championship, whatever. And then the next group are those who then get seen to a sufficient degree where a Premier League club comes for them. Well, we were talking about this yesterday, and in the way I looked at it, and it might be different from you, but the way I look at it is, if you give us money now, we ain't charging you £25 million every time we get a talent. You are so naive. You what? really are. Was that, was, that your, was that your bloody... Was that your reading story <laughs> voice then? You went really? all Jack, you went all Jack and Ori on me? Really? Yeah. No way. No, John, come on. Hear me out. Right. There's a lot of bang average talent in the, in, in, the, in, in the EFL, right? Bang average by Premier League standards. In terms mean? of bang average talent that he won 25 million quid for, right. right? That puts Premier League teams off buying them. Right. Whereas if you have a conveyor, if you have this money... And you have got this more, more. If they're buying more talent off the EFL because it costs less, but you're buying more, surely that makes more sense than what we have at the moment. Where we look at a player, Evan, look at a player. So let's say the fellow who was at Blackburn. No, the has Bredderton. Yeah, yeah. Right? And we're, Chilean. We're Chilean. And I can't play for Chile anymore because he won't speak Spanish. Well, really? do, well done, you. Biggest thing that ever happened to you, and you wouldn't learn Spanish. You're dope. Right, um, you've got him and you're doing an Aaron because they won 15 million quid and he's got one year left on his contract. Mm. I, in my perfect utopia world, John, because I don't live in the real world. We have noticed. Blackburn would sell him cheaper because they know they have money coming in from other sources, i.e. the Premier League. And I've just read that Blackburn can't have money off the Venkies because the because uh, they go, the Venkies can't get money to give them because there's a block on the money in their home country, so they're struggling. But if there was more of a conveyor belt, then players surely would cost less, and the Premier League would go to the EFL and take risks on your Tim Kales more often because they don't cost twenty five million think, quid. Yeah, I think that's what my utopia yeah, is. Yeah, it? and your utopia will bump up against real, real world. Right? Any um, asset player in this case, where more than one entity wants them yeah um we'll drive the price up that's how supply and demand works oh, I, 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 so, yeah. so i give the contrary view for you mm. did diaz get sold then no right therefore they didn't need the money did they because he left on a free contract yeah because but he thought he was going to get them going to score the goals to get them to the premier league yeah exactly but so. he didn't stay and they didn't run the contract down because they couldn't get 15 million did they no, no, I'm just saying. And if they needed the money, they would. And again, this is how negotiation works. I'm not paying you more than ten, right? And half of that mm. is going to be, you know, kickers. And so, no, I just think. So I think, well, yeah. I think no, no. I think it's false that you, you're I, going to end up with I, e EFL unless you make it a condition. I think it's more somewhere in the middle. I think there'll be more talent coming up from the EFL to the Premier League simply because they're getting handouts. I don't. I don't see. It. I don't see it as a handout, though. I think this is. This is. This that. I think we have a pyramid in this country, and we need to respect it. And I know you differ because you come from a slightly different. You're the, you're a business Mate, background, I, and you, I, no, no. I just you need to read what I write. Then. No, and I'm yeah. a I'm a I'm a fantasist. Fair play, <laughs> but I just think for this, you you only a pyramid only works, doesn't it? If it's if it's strong at the base, it's not just the top, and that money has to start filtering down. And I think, you know. The Premier League wanted it their own way, and we've seen what happens when you have it your own way. You eat yourself, I personally. That's my opinion. Anyway, I've... you might be one hundred percent right, John. No, no, no. On this subject, I, I... can't see straight. <laughs> you need to take them. I, 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 I've got contacts in my eyes, and by the way, and the first time I've ever worn them, and I'm all. I I'm... have long advocated protection of the pyramid. Mm. Right, we talked about it when the Treasurer Six did what they did, killing it at the top would kill all of it. Mm. Right. And the journalists all got behind it eventually when they realised mm. and read the room, fans yeah. and, and, and so on, right? But the Premier League needs to get its own house in order. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, cliches, you know, like charity begins at home, those sorts of things, mm. okay? And the EFL, in my opinion, have no divine right, yeah, to get money from the Premier League just because that's the no, top no, tier no. of English football. And by the same token, the Premier League has no objective need to absolutely give money to the pyramid but for the good of football mm. 
unless we forget it's the Football Association Premier League and the Football Association where all the grassroots stuff gets done in this country. And I think what should happen as a two-tier approach yeah. is that there should be some mechanism for levying on the Premier League a big number, mm -hmm. which is goes somewhere, let's just pretend, where it goes is the football association yeah or, or something and then it needs to be determined how that money is discharged because at the moment what's happening is that the, the premier league clubs are railing against it because they're looking after self-interest mm -hmm. have we got enough money already how how are we going to you know the claims that some clubs will have to borrow money to pay this levy and so on and so yeah, forth yeah. which is clearly boulder dash right um not the people who are quoting that the football clubs yeah. claiming that that's what they might have to do, right? Um, but EFL needs to stand on its own two feet as well, right? Mm. And if it believes it needs handouts or it's entitled to handouts, then their structure needs to be looked at as well. I, because you yeah. know what will happen, and I know what will happen. EFL football clubs will be given money from the Premier League, and the majority of that money will end in the pockets of agents. Yeah, and if that happens, you know, that, that's, that's what But will the other happen. side of it is, though, just on the EFL, is that because of the parachute payments that the Premier League teams are getting given, are getting relegated, yeah, yeah. it makes it very hard for teams to get out that compete with those teams anyway. So... It's like you're almost saying, well, some some teams are getting are getting nice handouts when they get relegated, and they're not handouts, are they? No, I know, but it, it, it's these parachute payments. The way this, it just it feels it feels unsporting to everybody else. Um, and then I just think the Premier League could work with the work with the Championship in a much better way. You know, well, you it's have not the Championship; it's the EFL. No, I know, but I'm saying, as in, like you, when you have the playoffs and everything, and it's the the branding and all that kind of thing could be for the playoffs. Could be the road to the Premier League. So the Premier League are getting their name on that straight away. All those, do you know what I mean? All those kind of things straight away is is like the playoffs suddenly become the road to the. Well, pre the Premier League are marketing the EFL, particularly the Championship. Yeah, yeah. Now aren't they? For the last year or so, they've been yeah. doing that. Um, and you're right, it is the road to the Premier mm -hmm. League, right? Um, it, it clearly looks like, and this is where the, the the concern needs to be, it'd be interesting to know, Championship, if they what they would think of League One and League Two if they got the opportunity to be Premier League Two. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. it, isn't it? It's all, there's always something. There's always something bigger. Yeah. You know, you only look after yourself till, or mm. to look after others till mm. you don't need those other people. So but I do then, think Premier League needs that's, to, Yeah, I do the, think Premier League needs to get its own house in order. Yeah, um, a fair point. Um, I, I do think the thing around parachute payments needs to be looked at from a competitive point of view, mm. notwithstanding Luton have demonstrated that you can come through that, that pyramid and end up in the Premier League and be the smallest of small clubs mm. in financial terms, right? And actually perhaps hopefully sort of not to our detriment stay in the premier league yeah right yeah. so all the arguments about it's not fair right mm. loot and prove well but if you run properly and you get a bit of a following wind that furnace yeah. isn't so big you know as you can't get up and stay up yeah that's it having said that you know at the end of the season, thanks if which is stopping it being the three relegated clubs <laughs> we'll, go we'll up, see. We'll which see. would have been the counter argument, wouldn't it? As well, yeah. which to say, well, there's the evidence: three poor clubs in, in performance terms mm -hmm. went down and they bounced straight back again. Or the flip of that: Burnley ran away with the championship and they're, they're going straight back again. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting stuff. Right, let's have a look at some of our comments over on Sophie TV Premier. I apologise to people that we haven't, I haven't read any comments, but. Why do you need comments when the conversation is this good? Because they're used to Baz doing it and he can... Well, the conversation is so good. And it's not about multitasking. I just think the conversation is so good that I don't oh, need okay. to dip into the chat. Uh, I can't see I can see really well. <laughs> I can see really well. I just... I just, uh, I just... I'm just... I'm just looking, engaging. I don't need to read it all out because it's... You know. Um, they're normally very good, so let's no, do them. It's not about being good or not. It's about my 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 own self-importance yeah. uh steve p says i don't know what it is but when i watch other teams and then watch us it's like watching two completely different sports and i'm not even talking about good teams that game last night for example both of those teams had no other intention than scoring goals and winning the game when i watched Semenio score his first goal that was just so alien to how we play none of the players do what he he was doing at all and i just can't get my head around it none of our players run at the goal with the intention of scoring so we are so robotic and negative compared to every other team 
we'd never even think to go after a player like Simeo or, or, or Benny yet both walk into our team but when we pay more money for players who can't run so frustrating Bournemouth won that game because they weren't negative and actually took a risk by just going for it which we'd never do we would have lost that game 100% um, no I 100% agree I was thinking about this last night I think Luton made a conscious decision at some point to stop trying to defend and because they were losing games by the odd goal and at what some, there was a conscious point where they thought we're good enough to beat teams by scoring goals and that's what they do and of course it comes back to bite them mm-hmm. but they've won more games since Christmas than we have and we are a more so much more of a defensive team and a defensive setup. We, we talked about it yesterday. Yeah. It, lots of this is in the mindset that the manager starts with, which yeah. is defensively minded. Yeah. Simple. And that goes back to what we were saying before yeah. about people patting them on the back and they're each other on the back and all saying they're doing a great job. Well I'm sorry when I I, I look at Luton and I'm not saying Luton are a better team than Everton, but we spoke about player it yesterday. Player player and we talked about two or three players we we'd put in our mm. team, but the rest of them you wouldn't, would you? But it's it's just a case of they've beaten us twice already at home. Yeah, yeah, but it's a case of they're brave and they go for it. I mean, by some of them yesterday, they refuse to lie down. That's mindset. They refuse to be beaten. And okay, they were beaten last night, and loads of people go, oh, "We'll point fingers, going to do three 0 up." But the idea of Everton being three 0 up is a is that so, was in the WhatsApp it's so group. alien to us. Three 0 up at half time. It's Imagine only, that was yeah. that you, Baz? I can't remember who did it. it was you on it? Yeah. You know, we've it's only happened. They started once. the season with a free hit. Yeah. So the mindset has been everyone expects it. Sorry, that's I'm talking about the what. That's the how, and I agree with that as well, Baz. That the Bournemouth. managers really excelled, right? But they started with everybody expecting them to go straight down. They they had the shock of the difference in. Hey, you should. You're not allowed to talk. You're not a mic. Go get a mic. No, no, They had the, the, the shock of the. Di- I'm doing this on yeah, you can do right. it on Ntag. But, but they had the shock of the the the, the rays of standard Premier League at the start, and then once they got the feet under the table, but they started with a positive mindset because they had nothing to lose. No that's right. But Bournemouth showed the same kind of attitude by being 3 0 down as well. And yeah. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about two teams. Well, that's a mindset. We've got nothing to lose. Yeah. We're already losing 3 0. Yeah. So let's go for it. And that, t- that results in a brilliant game, doesn't it? didn't have that mindset on Saturday. That's what I mean. Well, that's what I was going to say. That, that, I'm, I'm arguing that our problem is our mindset, and our mindset comes from the manager, right? Mm. It has to. Because we know, because we've had pro footballers on the sofa saying they do what the manager says, even though they know it's wrong. Well, James Wallen says, do Everton score three goals at Bournemouth? I know the away games we'll are, find out are about weeks. getting points, but you, you still need to score goals to be in games. True. Andrew Ryan says, Bournemouth winning yesterday gave me more joy than, than this club since December. I can't stand a single person in the club. Uh, surely 777 have an open goal with this takeover. Just have to shift the useless mates of Ken Knight and just bring him people who are competent not even good just competent and we'll be such a better position if we can survive this season Evan Viking says that Reading owner is pure evil okay um, I, talking about that go on um, yeah the triple the triple seven um, oh, ownership decision yeah. is always tomorrow isn't it right yeah. and tomorrow is it Thursday today never so comes. tomorrow it could very well be Monday, I, I was about to say I, I would rightly or wrongly suggests that one of those that and the forest decision will happen on one of the days and the other one will happen on the other one um and not wanting to disrupt the match weekend it would make sense of the forest point deduction if that's what it is was monday and therefore the ownership decision for everton is tomorrow um but tomorrow never comes as we know with this process but i'd like to think and, and I'll speak to you offline, Baz, later about some insight I got earlier in the week that this thing is drawing to a conclusion. Um, Carl has got to admit to being slightly nervous about the game last night, not helped by the first half performance, but in the second half, the quality and attacking shone through, and Stevenage barely threatened. <laughs> Brilliant. Come on, Posh. Oh, and good to see Luton mess up also. Darren Ferguson for the next Everton manager, please. 74 goals this season. I think only Arsenal and Liverpool have scored more. James Warland, uh, he said they've trained at St. George's Park. Me and Baz have played at St. George's Park. Um, he said part Did of... Did you win? Yeah, we did. Nice big trophy. Where is but it? You, you, you didn't play? No, I played. Sorry, I, I won the trophy. Sorry. Um, All by yourself? Yeah. I don't want that. 
plane. Yeah. Plane's dropping back in, Sorry, I thought you were there. Oh, that was a great day, that. Baz, had you been there, they'd have won it quicker and easier. Goals. I don't think win. you can win a game quick and easy. It's just yeah, 90 minutes can. or whatever. We didn't play 90 minutes. No, 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 of course you can. Baz, Baz can't move on a football pitch anymore. It doesn't have to. The last... Baz, <laughs> look at his face. Look at his face. Listen, Baz, find that. Sorry. Find that thing. Just look at it. Hang, hang on, hang on, John. Baz's final moments as a footballer was missing a penalty at Goodison of the Galaxy 10, so leave the little Ooh, fella alone. Ooh, keeps that quiet. What happened, though? You missed the penalty. Where did it hit? The post. The goalie. The inside of the post. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but I did. I did miss it. You did miss it. I did. He did. did miss it, as in it wasn't a goal. Yeah, I missed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, we still won the trophy. We won the Chan Cup. Who was in goal? We. we st- who was in goal? We still won the Chan. Did he go the wrong way, the goalie? We still won the Chan Cup. That's all that matters. We won the Chan, and then we were invited the year after, of course, to defend our title as so. So you had the trophy and it's no. gone and you have no idea where it is now. Uh, I was just worried about the box of chunk. <laughs> when, when you were drinking. Um, let's have a look. Still waiting for... I mean, Brantwaite, is, it's not... He's in, but it's not been... Don't think it's been... Conf- has it gone to? Wow, it's, it's gone, gone to. to, yeah. It Don't think it's been... Com- the squad hasn't been confirmed, confirmed, I don't think. Hasn't it not? No. <laughs> Unless... Apparently Gordon's in it as well, apparently. He's out. He's injured. Off. It's not as bad, is it? No, Apparently, no. it's not as bad. Yeah. BBC have announced it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, he's Jared Brantwaite's in the squad. Uh, so is Anthony Gordon, if you're bothered. So is Ivan Tony, Ollie Watkins, Cole Palmer, uh, Jordan Henderson. Mm-hmm. There you go. Two Everton plays in the English squad, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, have a look. Uh, the Blue says. Luton's attackers have, are significantly better than ours. Um, Dylan Blue says, what Luton are doing is incredible. They have no right to even be in the Prem, let alone be competitive and above other promoted teams. Um, yeah, fair play. No, but it's it's good it's good news for the Blues. Uh Let's have a look before. Grealish is injured, yeah, Ned. Been injured for a few weeks. Let's get back to some comments just before we wrap up. While you're reading stuff, I'll give you so, Go on. something that's just been sent to me on WhatsApp. The Go Tottenham on. Hotspur, Hotspur Supporters Trust yeah. have written to the Chief Executive of the Premier League and he's talk, they're talking about things to do with uh, what's going on and ticket prices and mm. um, Tottenham pulling the ladder up for concessions for senior citizens and the mm. like. But they finish with a, um, the very last line of the, the le- open letter and it says, it is never too late to do the right thing. Mm. wonder where there they got go. that from. Might be us, mightn't it? There you go. Well done, Tottenham Trust. Yeah, we're with you on that, there especially as a senior concession person. I want it maintained. There you go. <laughs> Stuart Thompson says, last night, give me so much joy. The smile has not left my face since. Get in there, Bournemouth. Sad, Get isn't in it? There, Bournemouth. Isn't that sad? He does realise our next game's Bournemouth. John right, says, we are a 20th century minded club in the 21st century. That's a good way of putting it as well. Uh, you Can you can you remember being on the break in the Lukaku days or even Pienaar Baines and you felt like something was going to happen? Pienaar chipping it at the uh, old... Uh, feel angry now uh, every time you get At the, the cemetery we go to at the last day yeah. these days, yeah. Feel angry because you know what's going on. And you knew he was going to score, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kev Rex has made up with the Bournemouth comeback last night, so annoying that we haven't picked up a few more wins at home. If we had, we'd be safe and out of this mess already. Sad to think that we are depending on others rather than getting ourselves out of danger, but that's heaven for you. Never do anything the easy way. We're no longer dependent on others. Quick question for me. But I think John will be interested in this as well. Just signed up for Apple TV. Any tips what to watch? Herd Invasion is good. I'm currently watching Masters of the Air. It's very good. Masters of the Air is good. It's yeah. good. Uh, I'm watching, uh, well, uh, Foundation is very good if you're into your sci-fi. Yeah, I've watched that. That was good. Um, Constellation is a bit of a hard work. I haven't started yeah, Constellation. But it, but it's, it's intriguing. Um, yeah. For all mankind. Oh, you've got a dot. You've loads to catch up with on yeah, it. For, for all mankind is unbelievably good like it's one of the best it's four series we've yeah, had it's yeah. literally like one it. of the best shows on on any channel yeah, it is very very underrated 
Finished the gentleman last Te- night on. Uh, no, have you watched that? Yeah, yeah, that was Ted Lasso. Brilliant for the soul, Ted Lasso. Honestly, everyone loves Ted Lasso. I think. But Apple's good at their their league tables about what's what, what yeah, being watched yeah. and stuff. You can't go wrong with watching what they suggest you watch. Monarch, Monarch, as well about another good one. Godzilla. I only watch that because of Baz. Yeah, uh, sorry, Ped. Rather, yeah, Monarch. Right? And if you're into like Godzilla, and even if you're not, I wasn't, and yeah. I watched it, and it was good. Um, what else? But if you're not, no, have you started watching um, Shogun on Disney Plus? No. Oh my but God! Was it you, Baz? You put it in the WhatsApps? Or oh, was it you saying I you'd mean, watched an episode last oh night and it was amazing? Yeah. It's amazing. It's half Japanese, half English. It's so good, though. Honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. It's a su- subtitle jobby, is it? Yeah, but it's brilliant. But when they're speaking English, they're actually speaking Portuguese. Really? <laughs> but it's. Severance, brilliant. Silo, brilliant. Yes. Honestly, slow horses. Slow horses. Oh my god. Apple TV, unbelievable. It just has these, like, it's got its own IP and it just, it's so good. What else? So many shows. I'm watching the the new look at the moment. The new look's good. Oh, that's the The wartime one about, um, no, about Coco Chanel. Chanel. The O. It's really good, really good, interesting. We should have a group where we can all, you know. <laughs> so, const- so number one, there we go. One, Masters of the Air, Constellation, Ted Lasso, the new look, which is what yeah. you've just said. Slow Horses. Uh, I've not watched the Dick Turpin thing. No, I'm not going to watch and it. I haven't really got it. No, I'm not The Morning watch Show, I've not looked at. Oh, Morning Show's very good. Is it? Yeah, very good. Criminal Record? No, I haven't seen That's that. good. That's very good as well. The Reluctant Travel, have you watched any of that yet? I have watched some of the first season. Then For All Mankind, Foundation, Lessons in Chemistry. No. Nope. Yes, brilliant. There you go. Baz has watched that as well. Monarch, Silo, Hijack. Have you, I've not been there. Yes, that. Hijack's brilliant. Invasion, saw that. Invasion's That's good. all right. It's not, not the best. Sisters. Yes, brilliant. Suspicion. No. Severance. What's Severance that? is so good. Dynasty. No. About the uh, New England Patriots. Basically, no. just go through the honestly, top 20. It's unbelievable. Oh, oh, it's the best streaming channel, it is honestly. By far. Although I started watching Death and Other Details last night on um, Disney Plus. It's a bit of a. It's a bit of a. Um, uh, it's a bit of a modern. Well, it's like the other one. What's it called? Knives Out. Seen Knives Out? Yeah. It's like that. It's like a vet. I like watched a, both of them, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's like a modern who done it in all tech, modern technical. Uh, you know, there's a few different people. It's, it's, it was good. Um. I haven't seen Godzilla minus one, but I will. I will watch. You should that. do a show. I know we're supposed to be about football. I know I should. What people should. Have I watched. used to. I used to do one with Aaron, but the time he was in the states and the time difference. Nerd Social Club used to really enjoy that. Um, there you go. Right, we're gonna head over and do. Uh, apologies, if I haven't done your comments. There's thousands, and they're all saying the same thing that everyone enjoyed last night. Um, so there you go. Brilliant, thank you. There you go. See, thank you for sticking with us. Apple TV is honestly, it's we should. I think we we should be like working for them, trying to sell it because it's like the least popular apparently streaming site, and I think it's like the best. That everything on it you want to watch. Yeah. If you're on Sky, you can get six months for, and MLS is on it as well. Yeah, you, so you get to see you like Messi. the MLS coverage, don't you, Baz? The MLS coverage is good because when the, all the games are playing, they have a they have a, a show where they just go to all the goals yeah, for free. Right. And you, ah, it's what I watch tend to watch. They just go to the games to for free. So instead of like sitting down and watching one game where you really might know everyone, you get to see just the best bits. You get to see some annoying people trying to tell you about football, but for the most part, it's it's, it's if sad. Netflix and Amazon aren't careful, they'll get binned by in my house because you don't watch it because you're watching all the Apple stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, it's if you've got Sky, you can get six months free, and I think if you've got a PlayStation, you can get six months free as well. Um, Too late you, already. Pat. There you go. Right, it's worth. We're it. heading over to more than a game. Baz will be coming on to have a good discussion about the game last night, and, and, you're and, and he can't. He can't wait to talk about the England call. He just said to me there. I said I'm. I'm, I just, I'm so infused to talk about England and international football because it is actually my passion. There you go. See you later. Bye. Take care.